What's up, guys? This is my first Dark Souls build of the year, actually, I guess. I'm going to go with the non-meta builds right now. This is the peasant build. And today, I just want to show you some duels I had in Arena. Didn't have much luck with invasions. Kind of trash at invasions right now. I'm more of a 1v1 type person. Uh, and this build definitely isn't meant for long combat engagements, especially since uh, I, my previous build, uh, my, I guess, draft of this build had Blessed Weapon on it and Emit Force. Uh, I left the Force because it at least gives me an option to kill multiple opponents at once if I get lucky. But let's just focus on the duels in Arena. I'm still new to some very popular mechanics. Like the switching of weapons, uh, move swaps is what I hear it's called. And some like reverse backstabs, which I do try, I think, once or twice in this video, but to completely fail. And I don't think I do any move swaps in this video. I haven't put it into practice. But let's see, let's focus on the build. This build is the peasant build. And right now it's using the war pick which is the fastest peasant-ish weapon I could find. But my favorite is definitely the pickaxe uh, from Dark Souls 2. It seems to have almost the same moveset, at least the uh, R1s and the... I think the R2 is similar too. But it's one of my favorite all-time weapons because in Dark Souls 2 it was so... it was considered the worst weapon in the game with how terrible its moveset was. And how short range it was for an ultra. I think it was a ultra. No, it was a great hammer. I'm pretty sure. Uh. And uh, last but not least, the great wooden hammer, which I looked it up, and its drop rate is so low. It's like one of the hardest weapons to get, I think. And it took me forever to farm it. Like this peasant build was not easy to make. I am. Tr I was farming for at least the whole day to get all the items in it. And like any good peasant, it they have faith. That's why it has a little bit of faith. I try to make it uh, as viable as possible while not losing any of the appeal of being a peasant. So it has tears of denial for, of course, that last save when your opponent thinks you're dead. Uh, and... I do have a dagger. I think, you know, a peasant. A peasant would have a dagger. It is chaos infused just for the damage. But the aesthetic isn't lost. It doesn't change to a fire sword because it has chaos infused. Uh, and it, the plank shield. The plank shield. I, I think if there has to be a, the most useless item in the game, it'd be the plank shield. It's R2. The whole charging at your opponent and just hitting them with it does not combo into at least any kind of uh, art one that I know of. I tried it so many times, and you only see me using it once in the video because every time I use it, people would just ultra great sword me or just hit me with their weapon. It would go all the damage would seem to go right through the shield or stun me. It gives no poise whatsoever. But the build is not terrible. Like, I could have added some weird Ultra Great Swords and other stuff to it. Oh, I have a Pitchfork too. I forgot about the Pitchfork. I never actually used the Pitchfork in this video. The Pitchfork is probably your finishing weapon in case, you know, you're trying to finish someone off. Or to be funny. Or they have, like, a really short sword. So you're able to poke them with it. But if they get too close to you, you'll probably be destroyed as well. See there, look at that. Shitty shield. It, you don't want to block with it because it just it's it's all the damage just seems to go through anyways. And I do have a blessed uh shield. It is blessed to make it sort of useful to have out. It's definitely for the aesthetic, but the only reason it's just not on this build is because the Blessed Enchantment regenerates HP when Tears of Denial is down, so your 
uh, Kirk armor doesn't just kill you after your Tears of Denial uh, is procced. And because if you have your Cestus out at all times, people will always be wary of your pairing. That for the reason it's not out. Uh, when the shield is out, not the Cestus, people don't think you can parry. But you know, just switching over real quick right before a move. It's all about prediction. This game is like 99% predictions, which is why I like. It's always outthinking your opponent. It's all about faking your attacks. And I will show some of my losses when the matches seem pretty good and even. But most matches where I try to figure out new mechanics, I'm just absolutely destroyed. Like, I think there's a couple matches where I want, like, you know, uh, just completely destroyed. Didn't even get a single hit in. I was thinking of a Mortal Kombat quote, but I forgot what it's called. Uh, I've noticed that most builds that involve... Uh, actual projectiles like Int or Faith. Like most people who I fought just had so low HP and not enough anything else to be viable. But I really want to try and every time I looked up a good Faith build in this game, people just talked about how it does no damage. But I've seen, I've seen that bow, that bow I got, you know, hit a couple times. Maybe it's a lot easier to dodge and I'm just not new to the mechanics. For the purpose of the, let's get in death and the weapons actually, the mallet. I usually use the, I'm going to call it a mallet because it just looks like a mallet. A big mallet. Uh, I use it mostly for people with looking like they had high poise. I don't know all the armors in the game in phantom color yet. But I can tell this dude is wearing 99% havels except for the head. It looks like kind of like a lost center cosplay. But you know with havels. <laughs> Instead of, I think the Lost Enders gear is in this game, actually. Uh, the mallet is, like, one of the coolest weapons in this build. Everything else is kind of, like, no special thing about it. I never use the, um, uh, sword art, I think it's what it's called in this game. But the mallet is the one with, the, like, a really cool sword, sword art. Sword art. Your war pick is basically your weapon. Sorry about that. The weapon that has the best chance of actually hitting your opponent if they have low poise and high poise, they'll just tank right through it and hit you twice with their big weapon. And it's not fun. I think, like, even though I focus 99% of my build, because this is like a peasant build, you don't need much for it in terms of stats. Most of it went into HP and stamina. And a very little bit into faith. The rest are into actually something I don't need, which is quality. I think the highest quality I needed was 12. Unless you're talking about the Black Knight Greatsword, which is in there. Which I did want to use. That was like something that I wanted to learn is how to parry swap. And I wanted to use it for ganks, but that did not happen whatsoever. Every gank had like... Once I parried, I was being to hit two or three times while pairing and the um like i said the pickaxe i never used that's that's something i'm about to figure out how to use actually i do like its sword art you just run forward and fall on your feet it's one of the most entertaining things about that weapon and i hear most weapons in this game aren't viable like a lot of people keep telling me that most weapons in this game just have a better version that does almost 100 damage per hit more, which makes it probably useless to use that weapon. Yeah, uh, the next is the, the, the pickaxe, yes, the pickaxe. Again, the most useless hammer, useless great hammer in the game. And that's only there. To just show off. There's no reason to use that weapon in this game either. It's not as useless. Because I do actually get some good hits with it in this video to my knowledge. But it's just. It's just so short. It's about the, the distance of a one handed weapon. But like. Three to four times slower. And it really needs to be like. There's no way to buff it. It's just it's just a pickaxe. What are you going to do with the pickaxe? 
and that's basically it about this build. Uh, the end of the video, I'll definitely sh at the end of this fight, I'll definitely show you the stats. But that is it, and thanks for watching. What's up, guys? This is the part of the video where I just want to explain the build better and show you what the items are here for. Uh, so let's get right into it. Sorry, I stutter. Okay, so the Chaos Dagger is definitely to get those crits in when you need them the most. Uh, in the video, I really didn't... I use this to crit sometimes. That's because I'm still new to this game. I don't have the muscle memory to just switch over right now after every parry. This is your meat and butter. This is what you want to be using if you're trying harding. You know, it's a parry. Like, this is your repost weapon. This is the most damage you will get from a repost. Your war pick, plus, I think everything's plus 10 in here. Yeah. Yeah, everything's plus 10. Mostly everything. You'll see later. War pick, straight sword. This is a great hammer, now that I'm checking it out. This move set is terrible. Then you got the great hammer. I already went through most of that during the video. The four prong plow. It's a parry weapon. Bow, you know, just have a good bow. Talisman. Follower's Torch is also a weapon I had here. It is really cool. I like it. Can be used for to replace the shield, actually, but I just didn't do it. Uh, you can do that with it. I think it's really nice. It goes with the peasant aspect pretty well. And now for these shields. These shields are literally here to fill a spot. So I can easily switch over to this and then back because you only really need to be casting this for tears of denial and that's really all you need to be casting it for this why do i have this here honestly i don't know why i have this here myself i think i just like it just fun walk out you know you're in a meme lobby and you don't have any meme weapons to have fun with the rest of the people honestly you're just scum of the earth if you do that you need to have some sort of like Way to have fun. And I think this and a flame torch is definitely a way to have fun. Giant shields. They're wooden. So I literally would think, you know, well, a peasant carrying two wooden shields. He must be a pretty strong peasant. Uh, probably. A... Yeah, there we go. Okay. I have this. I don't know. I guess in case you want to block off an entrance for a host to escape while your partner kills him. This would be a good idea. That way you can't run back to the start of the game and summon new people. That's just something I thought of literally just now. The da uh, the rings. I never went into the rings. Here we go. Well, first the armor, I guess. Black hand hat, worker's garb, gauntlet of thorns, and ordained trousers. I got moonlight arrows, lightning bolts, in case I want to switch to the bow or crossbow or whatever. Undead Dark Ring. That's just for the fashion. If you... What ring I had here... Would probably... If you really want to try hard, you know... Blood the String... Wait, no. Wrong ring. My bad. It'd be the Milk Ring. Because uh, screwing your rolls, you can do so many sneaky things with that. Uh, and Dark Souls 2 is definitely one of the strongest rings out there. Uh, I also had this... Stamina rings. Protections is great since you're using another ring, which we'll go into now. And that's the prisoner's chain. It really doesn't give you that many stat debuffs for how valuable it really is. Especially with the stats I have. Hornet ring for obvious reasons. Although, I guess you could put anything here. Uh, ring of favor and protection. I think ring of favor and protection and prisoner chains never change. The other two rings, I would have the Milk Ring and Ring of Protections. That's all up to you, what your ring preference is. Honestly, there aren't that many rings in the game you need to have equipped. They're only used to actually help finish your build, in my opinion. I just luckily that this peasant build doesn't need much, so I could put Prisoner's Chains and Ring of Favor in here, which are, I would say, Ring of Favor is definitely a must-need on every build. Pretty close Prisoner change is an optional, but it definitely helps. It's only an increase of five stats, I think. Yeah, five stats. 
Which, now that I think about it, that could probably be changed too. Especially since I'm already capped out on stats. Uh, Estus, Ashen, you know, I guess if you're dueling, you can take off Estus. Golden Pine Resonance is literally there. You switch to the... Oh, wait, no, you can't. Never mind. Uh, I'm an idiot. You can't do that. I guess it'd be for quick damage. You see a good position, you just do that and attack real quick. There's literally nothing useful for it. You just think, oh, th there's an opening. Let me just use it real quick to add some damage. Oh, they missed their... Oh, you do stop for a second. You know. Oh, they're about to miss space and throw an attack? Well, now I got a buff and I'm attacking. It's great. Uh, then you have... I chose throwing knives over church guardian shivs because it goes with the build more. Same thing with fire bombs over lightning urns. It's clearly better, but it goes with the build better. Undead hunter charms because there are undead hunter charms. Invasions. Hosts are usually terrible people. And summons even more terrible. So I have blooming moss clumps here for in case poison. I did have some of those, but I used those during invasions. I'll get them back once I reload the save. And then you have divine's blessings and hidden blessings. Uh, just in case that invasion goes wrong and you run out of Estus. And that's about it. That's it for the build. Let me show you the complete stats. Um, 125, I wanted to be exactly 120 to make it fair, and, you know, that's the exact meta. But 125 still fits within that meta. It's just more scummy to do, in my opinion. But, this is the build. You only really need 16 Thaif. You only need 15, actually, but I think... No, do you need 16? Let me make sure that's accurate. Yeah, you need exactly 16 Thaif. And I left Intelligence and Luck the same. Who upgrades even Luck? Vitali Vitality is not really 15. Uh, let me take off that ring so you can see what the actual build is. This is the actual build. Vitality is only 10. So it remained at a 10. Dexterity is 30. Strength 45. Endurance 30. Vigor 40. Attunement 23. And exactly 23. Because that gives you 3 spell slots. Just enough. I have tears of denial and force. And that would conclude this build. I hope you all enjoy. I don't know what I plan on making next. Maybe some suggestions in the comments would be great. Oh, and I don't want to just build the strongest weapons. I like weak weapons. Most people... Actually, that can be a whole video in itself. Explaining the meta. I'll, I'll do that. In another video completely. I don't want to do it right away until I learned at least the mechanics. I th oh, for some reason I'm yawning. That's, I'm terribly sorry. The mechanics of the meta, completely different than Dark Souls 2. And, you yeah, know, I can't do it. That's just it. I'm not going to explain it right now. It's a whole nother video. It's exact. It's a whole nother video. I can't go into it now. But thank you for watching. That is the build. And I'll see you another day.